So it is Friday, November 8th, 2024, and this is the Daily Brief. There are 1,580 Russians off the battlefield. That's, that's uh, probably high for the week. It's been down, hovering around the 12-somethings, maybe 13-something. Um, nine tanks off the battlefield, 49 armored fighting vehicles, 32 artillery systems, 84 vehicles and fuel tanks. So it the, the tempo is still high on the battlefield, but today I'm not really going to highlight the battlefield as much as I am going to talk about what Russians are doing at night, just bombing, uh, targeting civilians with drones and missiles. Um, this is uh, about two and a half, maybe three to one losses for the Russians to the Ukrainians from Andrew Perpetua's list. Now, yesterday was the Victims of Communism Memorial Day. Uh, and then we remember communism has always been and has always will be incompatible with liberty, pr prosperity, and dignity of, of life. On this day, overnight on this day, and by the way, communism is a totalitarian system. And we generally think of this B definition of or relating to a political regime based on subordination of the individual to the state and strict control of all aspects of life and productive capacity of the nation, especially by coercive measures. That's what communism was. But a looser definition is of or relating to centralized control by an autocratic leader or hierarchy. And that's where Russia is today. It's not communist and totalitarian in that exact sense, but it has doubled down on authoritarianism since uh, since Putin came to power. There was a lot more freedom and now there's a lot less freedom. Okay, on this day, overnight, air defenses managed to shoot down or through electronic means, knock down 92 drones and four KH-5969 missiles and an Iskander ballistic missile. Now you're going to see, I say that, or electronic warfare, because you're going to see Zelensky use a different figure of what was just shot down. Okay, now this is the British intelligence update. Approximately 2,000 one-way attack uncrewed aerial vehicles were launched by Russia against Ukraine over the month of October 2024, exceeding the number September's numbers by 700. So both the battlefield casualties and the drone and missile attacks were higher in October than in September, and both of those are higher. Those are the highest months now, where September was the highest month of the war. With continuing Russian investment in a range of OAW UAVs or OWA UAVs, diversification of supply and expansion of launch sites, firing rates have been trending consistently upward since mid-2024. Through the first week of November, Russian firing rates re remained high and in line with recent weeks, with launch sites being reasonably simple and easy to reestablish if targeted. Should production remain uninhibited, the primary linking, uh, limiting factor for Russian UAV operations is likely the human resource relative to launch capacity. It's likely that the high, this is the key, it's likely that the high figures seen through September and October to date will become normal. That's that's terrifying that it's going to keep doing this because here's what's really happened overnight. Uh, they've just been um, attacking the civilian population in ways in order to try to bring them to their knees. And that's a fool's errand. It didn't work in Dresden. It didn't work in the Blitz in uh, England. And it's not going to work in Ukraine. But here's the devastation that it caused. All evening and night, T attacked our cities and communities with missiles, drones, guided aerial bombs targeting the Odessa, Kharkiv, Kiev regions. In Kharkiv, as of now, more than 20 people have been reported injured, including an infant. infant. Residential buildings and infrastructure were damaged. In Odessa, strikes damaged ordinary homes. One person was killed. Emergency rescue operations continue near Zaforitia, Zaforitia following yesterday's attack, which so far claimed eight lives, injured more than 40 people, including four children. Last night, our forces shot down four missiles and approximately 60 strike drones. That's shot down, not the electronic war warfare means, which means a higher number. Air defense, long-range capabilities, weapons packages, and sanctions against the aggressor. These are actions required, not just words. We're very concerned. We're deeply concerned. Strong words is not going to stop this. Um, this is today Russia, uh, Russia attacked a school in my native Odessa. This is Oleski going Goncharenko talking. I'm sure Russia will say that NATO soldiers were there. Locals came to help clean up the rubble. 
Here we have Kharkiv, a block hit by in Zafirishia by a bomb. They're actually using thermobaric bombs now uh, on these uh, on these drones. Uh, regional administration head Fedorov confirmed that the occupier struck the regional oncology center. This is a medical facility. 17 patients were evacuated to hospitals in the city uh, where they are currently receiving the necessary care. And, and yet this won't even be covered in the news. It's just it's become commonplace to hit hospitals. Russian troops also struck Kharkiv with one KABs hitting 12 high rise buildings in the state. Latosky district, Major, uh, Mayor Igor Tekarov has said the attack injured 25 people, including one three month old baby. 30 residents were evacuated, including four kids. Are you hearing that the children being attacked, a hospital being attacked, I mean, a school? This past hour, Russians hit the central or uh, the residential areas of Odessa with swarms of drones equipped with thermobaric warheads. The death toll from Russian missile strikes in Zafirishia has risen to 40, uh, 10 with 41 injured, including a 5-year-old boy. The number of victims has risen to 40. Russian airstrikes with aerial bombs hitting an oncology center in Zafirishia wounded include four children. Just more pictures of the same. Russia also attacked the Estonian ambassador's house in Kiev. Yeah, we're not making this up. Like You can see it for yourself. And see this little guy? This is a picture that, I mean, it's kind of scraped. They got it out of the rubble, but he's no longer with us because of last night's Russian attack. And let, let that sink in. This is what Russia is doing. Frontline report, Edelweiss Brigade ambushed and decimated 75% of Russia's assault near a strategic Seversk hub. Meticulously planned defensive operation by Ukraine's 10th Mountain Assault Brigade demonstrated how modern military technology, tactical patience can neutralize even large-scale assaults. Um, this a recent failed assault near Seversk. Uh, outraged some of the Russian ultranationalist mill bloggers over Russian command failures and the pervasive Russian military culture of exaggerating battlefield successes. And this guy is also no longer with us. But unlike the little kid in the tiger outfit that is an innocent and should never have been part of this, he's a major general. So this is the eighth major, or this is the eighth general that has been killed in the war in Ukraine. Um, his name is General Pavel Klemenko. He was reportedly attacked by a drone at a checkpoint at, near the front line. And so I looked this up. Um, I, so I, I first looked at perplexity, also because part of my research, I deal with AI. And so just to see if AI would give the right answer. So yeah, eighth Russian general. Uh, and I double checked that with Wikipedia's list of Russian generals killed during the invasion in Ukraine. Now, Wikipedia says eight confirmed and there is another two that are claimed so that's where we are so we're just going to go with the conservative confirmed of eight russian generals have been killed since the war began now as we're thinking about this let's think about it like this only one american general was killed in afghanistan or iraq total like and it was in afghanistan and that was the only american general killed in the battlefield space since 1970 i believe and there have been eight Russian generals killed in Ukraine so far. Okay, at night drones, this is Ukrainian drones now, attacked a Russian oil refinery in Sar Saratov. After a, uh, the attack, a fire broke out on the territory of the oil refinery. Here it is in the Moscow Times. Uh, Ukrainian's military intelligence claimed responsibility for a drone strike of an oil refinery in southern Russia's Saratov region. Eyewitnesses said sparked a blaze late Friday, according to media reports. A drone was eliminated over the territory of Saratov overnight. Part of the debris fell on an industrial zone in the Zadovsky district, the governor said. Sure it was. It was debris. It wasn't that it actually hit the thing. Like, debris doesn't tend to do that debris tends to like fall like so i tried to show a video yesterday and uh youtube flagged it so i had to cut it out but it, it was a drone it blew up in air and when it did you saw a big fireball go up and then you saw debris just kind of trickle down it would look like like dark snow uh, larger than snow, obviously, but it, it kind of just had that kind of effect. That's not what this is not what debris does. If you've seen any videos of how debris or when something gets hit and then debris, that's not it. 
Okay, uh, one of the largest Russian disinformation campaigns of the year is currently underway, featuring a fake video of Ukrainians shooting and then burning a MAGA mannequin. Like, their, their propaganda efforts sometimes are just so bad, like, so immature-ish. Uh, threatening videos of, of shooting MAGA-dressed mannequin and setting it on fire in a state hyperaggression is a weird way to say thank you. Uh, here it says, this message that we got from Ukraine after uh, the money that we gave them, billions and billions of dollars, which we need more at home, threatening, yeah, so really? Like, but that's not, that's Russia, that's Igor somewhere in St. Petersburg making this up. It's not, uh, but it's trying to make it look authentic. Okay, and I'm going to leave you with this. Two things. Uh, Dutch soldiers giving Ukrainian soldiers a proper send-off after they complete their training to go home and defend their homeland. Thought that was nice. And finally, hello from Ukraine. Have a productive Friday. All right, my friends, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.